In today's video, we're going to check out the Moai SLA 3D printer. So this is a SLA 3D printer kit that's currently on Kickstarter, and this marks the first ever SLA 3D printer review I've done on Maker's Muse. Welcome back to Maker's Muse, guys. So SLA stands for Stereolithography Apparatus, and it's one of the first 3D printing technologies ever created back in the early 1980s. And it uses a liquid resin that is polymerized with UV light. So this means you have a liquid, but if you expose it to UV light, like under the sun, it's going to harden and polymerize into a solid resin, a plastic. So this technology has been around for a long time but it's been very expensive up until recent years. So Mark is one of those creators who wanted to take SLA and make it more accessible and more affordable. So he created the Moai SLA 3D printer kit. So this machine right here is a pre-production unit. So it's currently on Kickstarter, but this review does cover the pre-production unit because the production ones don't exist yet. So keep that in mind if you intend to back this project. So as I said, this is a kit, and it was actually one of the best kits I've ever put together. The parts were well labeled, the instruction manual, despite being a pre-production unit, was very thorough, and I had a great time putting it together, which is mostly made out of T-slot extrusions, pre-assembled sheet metal components, and a few electronic parts that just screw into various areas. It goes together very nicely, actually no problems at all. There was a few areas where the screws were a little bit confusing as to what to use, but for the most part they were bagged in easy to understand labeling and I had no real issues putting it together. The machine itself uses a Galvo laser system, which is two motors attached to spinning mirrors and the laser hits that and it's directed onto the areas of the bed. And the way the machine works is actually upside down to how you might normally think of 3D printing. The vat itself contains the liquid resin and the print plate drops down into it, slowly raising up layer by layer with the part upside down attached to the printing plate. The thing about the Moai system I noticed straight away is it's quiet. It's actually printing right now. The Galvo system is completely silent. The only noises it makes are when it changes layers. So the Moai is known as what's called a bottom-up SLA system. So the laser's in the bottom hitting the through the clear vat into where the print plate is. So it needs to relieve suction from that cured layer. So the vat itself actually tilts to relieve that suction and then the print plate continues up. It's a very elegant and simple method of relieving that pressure, that suction between each layers instead of just going thunk and pulling it away directly up. And that means more than likely your prints are gonna survive instead of being stretched and deformed from the actual suction forces each layer has to overcome. Now learning how to prepare prints for SLA was a whole learning curve for me, but basically you can't have infill like a regular FDM printer because it's printing in a liquid, not in air. So you need to have drainage holes and make parts hollow if you wanna preserve resin. You can make them completely solid if you so choose, but don't forget resin is still more expensive than FDM filament. It's getting cheaper, but it's still a fair bit more expensive. You're looking at around $50 for 500 milliliters, give or take, depending on where you get it from. Working closely with Mark, I used Mesh Mixer to create my support materials. We did try to use Autodesk's Print Studio initially, but I did have issues with the supports not completely adhering to the model, so the supports would work well, but the model itself would fail and not adhere to the supports. So I ended up using Mesh Mixer and the default SLA DLP support settings, which you then export out to his custom Cura profile. And it's interesting because Cura is meant to be used for FDM 3D printing, but in this case, we're using it for SLA. Actually, this machine just takes standard G-code, but instead of having a nozzle diameter or a line width of 0.4 or 0.5 millimeters, it has a line width of 0.069 millimeters. Ridiculous, which means you're going to get superior resolution of an SLA system compared to an FDM 3D printing system. So what are the catches of SLA? Well, there is quite a few. For a start with this pre-production unit, the build quality is fantastic, but there is a few areas where there could be improvement. For example, a door does not close completely properly and there is a laser in that system, which you do have to be careful of. It's only low power, but any sort of laser you should treat with full respect. Also the side panels are slid into the T-slot extrusion and I found it's best to actually make them sort of loose and put the top panel on and then sort of snug them up to that top panel to make sure there's no gaps. Again, to make sure that that laser radiation can't escape from the 3D printer. 
Navigation is very simple and if you've used any 3D printer with a, a sort of encoder knob before, you'd be quite comfortable. Although it took me a while to realize that double tap is back, there's no back button. I would like to see it back on the machine, but otherwise it just has the encoder wheel and a power, main power on and off switch. So if everything goes to hell in a handbasket, you can just kill the power straight away and if, when you turn it on again, the machine will automatically home and then you can go and do damage control. Biggest downside of SLA 3D printing, the resin is messy, it's fairly toxic, not too bad, but you don't wanna to touch it. And once it's in the tray, that tray has a lifespan. It is a consumable, it has a special coating, and that resin will slowly go off. So unless you're using the machine all the time, then you're possibly going to see that tray not get very much use out of it before you have to replace it. It is a consumable, just like the resins, and it stinks. So having this machine operate in this small studio, I need constant active airflow to avoid the smells building up. If you wanna know what it smells like, in this case, resins do smell differently depending on the manufacturers. It smells like an acrylic. So it has that sort of acrid smell, something that you'd experience when laser cutting acrylic because it is a UV cured polymer, a photopolymer. It does have that acrylic sort of acrid smell till it's cured. Once the parts are cured and they are, they're very easy to cure, basically you give them a wash in isopropyl alcohol or in my case I found methylated spirits actually works really well, easy to get in Australia. Give them a wash in that and then wash them in water back and forth a couple of times and then put them outside in the sun for a little while and the UV from the sun will harden the models and then they'll be completely safe to touch, they're not sticky and they won't smell anymore. So a couple of my favorite prints while using the Moai system, I've been always interested in lattices, as you would know if you followed Makers News for some time. And this is one of the first attempts I've done ever of reproducing the internal 3D lattice design that I did quite a while ago that I scaled up, but this is like minute scale. So this is a full 3D lattice and it's designed for systems like this. Like you could use this sort of thing for powder as well, but for resin, it doesn't need support material and it came out really nicely. The, the detail on that, each one's only one millimeter across, is phenomenally detailed, it's very fine. And the really neat thing about SLA is you can print at stupidly fine layer heights. So this is a MakerCoin printed at 0.025 millimeters or 25 microns <laughs> in layer height. So I picked up the tip when I was in, at, in Hangzhou at Shining 3D of printing at a 45 degree angle, so it had some support material at the back which unfortunately does have to be broken away. It's the same material and it does leave pock marks, but the layer, uh, the layer accuracy is absolutely phenomenal and you can't see any ley lines at all. It's just, it looks like gummy candy. It's absolutely impeccable. Next, I wanted to try my torture lattice cube. So I have heard from other people with SLA systems that these, this print does work without needing any sort of support and they're right. So that's a half scale torture lattice cube, the one that I designed some time ago, printed absolutely flawlessly. No issues or deviation whatsoever. And it's absolutely stunning. I love this. And it was printed at 100 microns as well. So you cannot see the layers. It's a lot more accurate than an FDM printer would be at that layer height. And finally, if you just see my structure synth video, well, this is the, the my favorite sort of void wave design that I printed on the my SLA with no support materials. So the thing I've just sort of, I've been learning on the fly with SLA, but the thing about it is those overhangs do sort of work if, as long as you've got enough surface area to back them up when they get released, relieved from the suction of the bottom plate. So you can't have stuff floating, obviously, it's not gonna be picked up, but as this swept out, it's had no problem relieving that pressure. And yeah, this is a fantastic print. Again, completely not sticky, hardened just with the power of the sun, the UV from the sun. So if I compare this to an FDM print, the cubes on the FDM print are rounded because it's a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It can't physically produce a sharp edge, edge at all. But with the, uh, the SLA system, it's got a 0.069 millimeter resolution. So the edges of those cubes are sharper. So you can produce, you can, re you can resolve a sharper edge in an SLA system. Okay, so let's get to the bottom line. Is this machine for you? So have you ever owned a 3D printer before? Are you just looking to get into it for a hobby? And do you wanna print things just casually around the home? I would say no, because SLA 3D printers are not easy to use. I'm sure there is some on the market that are, but they would cost a substantially amount more, substantial amount more, 
than the My SLA kit. This machine was 800 US at the, the early bird, now it's 1000 US, and that is remarkably low for an SLA system. So who is it for? Well, I would say it's for artists, jewelers, and war gaming enthusiasts, as well as scale modelers. So why am I saying that? Well, this machine can resolve insane detail. Detail that you have never dreamed of when running FDM 3D printers, even if you change to a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, it is absolutely mind blowing the detail you can get off this SLA system. And if you're doing small figurines, rings, small artistic installations, stuff like that, or very fine detail work for a train carriage for a custom locomotive build, throwing ideas out there, an SLA system is ideal. You can get phenomenal detail, which means less post-processing. If you've seen Bill Duran's Punish Props, it's all about sanding. If you can remove post-processing, remove sanding time, you make your life a little bit happier. So full disclosure guys, this machine was provided to me free of charge by Mark of Pierre Poly and his My campaign in, in return for giving you guys this unbiased review and my feedback. And if you wanna see like how it works, I did a whole stream, it was a bit of a disaster, but I was running this machine live on stream. And once it's going, it just works. Once you get the, the quirks and you've got the laser nice and focused, I didn't even have to do much focusing. It was pretty much good out of the box. You just send files to it and it keeps going, which is awesome. If you enjoyed this review here on Makers Muse and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, reviews, and projects, smash that subscribe button, guys. It helps us out a huge amount. And look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.